welcome to this session on putting it all together. This is a quick introduction. We have been seeing all these 14 topics earlier, and today is a culmination of a long series where we look at the integration points and how to use these products, not in isolation, but together. We are going to cover how these things integrate, how to make sure you use them properly, not just one or two people in pockets, but across the organization as well as at individual level. And only when you do that, you're going to get good return on investment. And one of the ways of achieving that is standardization. So when you spend these 15, 20 minutes attending this session, what are you going to get? The first thing you're going to get at least 20 minutes of time saving, so you can shut off your laptop 20 minutes early, spend more time with your family or do something else which is more valuable. A very simple but very effective thing, how to reduce eye strain, I will show you. And you know, we have seen so many products which help you in better collaboration, execution, analysis. And if you do all this well, your work life balance is going to improve and you're going to grow faster and more in your chosen career. Now let's talk about eye strain because that is the simplest thing to do. Not really an integration topic, but it across office products. So you go to office, go to file options, and there is a theme drop down. By default, the theme is white. So all the time, full day, we are looking at these products. Too much of white color going into the eyes. That gives you eye strain. We can't shut off the laptop because we have to work, but at least we can reduce the amount of white going in. So change that theme to dark gray. You can see the menus remain same, but white is replaced with gray, which is more soothing on the eyes. Simple and effective. But beyond that, there are so many products and so many features. What is the whole purpose? It may be overwhelming to say, why do I need to learn all this? And every way, any way my work is happening, the way I'm doing things for years. So the idea is today we have some input and we have some output. Input is the effort and whatever outcome, achievement, whatever. The idea is if we can achieve the same thing with less effort, why not? Or put the effort same, but achieve more, even better. So the best is less effort and more impact. And that is the single underlying principle of all office tools. Unfortunately, the way we use these tools, we are back to square one. In fact, we are putting more effort and achieving less. So the gap between one and four is where inefficiency lies. And if you use these products well, you can actually have significant unimaginable improvement. Here is some data from a real customer. This is a before after kind of thing, like we do BPR, business process reengineering. Someone looks at the process, says, okay, this is the time it is taking, then we improve it, then we check again and we see the difference. So these are done for a specific customer. I can't tell you the name, but look at the before time and after time. The data remained the same, the product remained the same, the person remained the same, no hardware upgrade, but dramatic improvement. That is called effective utilization. And this was done without writing any macro, just out of the box. So the most important part of Office 365 platform is there is so much out of the box functionality that utilizing it correctly gives you immediate and sustained benefits, which can be amplified across the organization because everyone uses Office. Now, when we say there is improvement, there are two types of features we are talking about. One type of feature is improve something which is existing. For example, you may be getting one file from each region and you have 15 regions. Now, every week you have to open all the 15 files, copy paste into one massive Excel sheet and then consolidate and create reports. That's already happening for DK. 
Now using Power BI, instead of you opening individual pipe, you can ask Power BI to go to that folder and Power BI will do the consulting. That will save you half an hour. And then you can use it for better analysis using the same Power BI. So that's improving existing things. On the other hand, there can be new features which are not having any equivalent in the past. Like in PowerPoint, we have seen we just type some text and PowerPoint finds the right clip art. PowerPoint finds the matching font, color scheme, layout, design, and gives you a nice looking slide. This is not an improvement, this is a revolution. So, two types of features both have to be exploited fully. Now, the most important feature across all these products is integration. That is why this session is about how to use them together rather than in isolation. You'll remember this slide which we have been using in the beginning of each of these sessions. So what are we talking about? Each set of products is designed for a particular need. Create, communicate, analyze, and so on. We know that by now. In individual session, we have also discussed different kinds of integration options. Now, the most important thing from an overall utilization perspective is to ensure that these products are available on mobile as well. Except for Sway and Forms, all tools have a mobile app. Why? Because today, mobility is not secondary. In fact, today it has become primary. Many of us are working from home and we may not have the official laptop or a desktop. So the only thing you have is mobile. Generally, we think mobile you can't use for editing and it's small form factor. But if you have Teams app on mobile, you can actually do a full fledged meeting sitting wherever you are without having a desktop or a laptop or a tablet. Why? Because Teams allows you to not only share PowerPoint and you can present it from your mobile, even though others are seeing it on a projector or desktop. It also allows you to chat, do audio video simultaneously and also share your screen in case you are showing some data, editing documents, or showing some application. So full-fledged functionality. You would miss that if before this lockdown, you had not put the Teams app on your mobile. So make sure all these apps are on mobile and people know when to use them and how to use them. Like I said earlier, Teams is a container. What does that mean? Teams is helpful for ad hoc work and project specific. Work. So when it comes to either, Teams can technically talk to all these products because Teams is just a container. You create a place inside Teams for that project. In that project, whether it's a Word file or Excel or a Cold Raw file, Teams can store it and give access to everyone. Obviously, file integration. But all the other products can also be added as tabs. The idea is once you go into Teams for achieving a common objective or a project, then you don't need to go out of Teams. Minimize context switching. So obviously, Teams has to accommodate everyone else. So it's a universal container. From the same point of view, there is one product which is designed for integration, and that is Power Automate. What happens in Power Automate? Power Automate by itself doesn't do anything, but it is looking at things happening in all these products except for the gray ones. So you can tell Power Automate, keep on monitoring my mailbox because 20 different vendors are going to send me a quotation. They will have subject called quotation ID or RFP ID. Check is there an attachment? If yes, then put that file, detach it from the mail, and put it in the procurement committee team in that particular folder. This is the job of Power Automate. So it can look for triggers across all these products and it can implement actions across all these. products. So Power Automate is the textbook of integration, so to say. And then Power Automate also integrates very well with Power BI and for Power Apps. So what is the importance of Power BI to Power Automate? Automate means when something happens and do something. So if you understand, there is a very popular tool called IFTTT. If this, then that. So Power Automate is an enterprise version of that. So it integrates with 200 plus products. 
So let's say we generate a dashboard automatically every week based on sales and we are monitoring profitability and there is a KPI which says what is the profitability. If that profitability goes below the desired level, that's the trigger. And that trigger can activate a mail. It can activate some action points in planner, send reminders to people and so on and so forth. So that's how these products integrate with each other. Similarly, Power Apps is an app. You use it for data entry, capturing images, GPS locations, videos, all that. So when some data is captured, Power Automate can look at the data, use some business rule and invoke some action, either in Outlook or Planner or Excel, any other relevant tool. So that's why it's called a Power Platform. I'm going to give you a few examples of how other products integrate. Most commonly we use Word, Excel, PowerPoint, so let's look at those. So we have PowerPoint, which integrates with so many different things. We have covered most of this before, so nothing new here, but I've just tried to say, if you take PowerPoint as the main, what else it can work with? Similarly, similar thing for Word. Word also, one of the things you may not have noticed is Word can be used for editing PDF files other than whatever else it is showing you here. Excel also integrates with many tools. I have not made this slide for all the products, but you get the idea. The important concept is don't use these products in isolation. In the course of doing day-to-day -day work, wherever there is an integration opportunity, that means that integration is saving you time, which otherwise you would be doing manual. So from that point of view, knowing about integration, and using it is advantageous to you. The bonus is you're getting extra time, which is valued. So now which tool to use when, because there is a plethora. I'll give you two examples. For example, we know this, when we have to stay or save a file, where to save? We have covered this in individual session as well. It's just a summary. One of the mistakes we do is we put videos in everything other than stream. So when you start using stream, videos actually get streamlined and you get many other benefits. Another one which we saw is how do you work with others? So different types of context. If it is ad hoc work versus common project versus no common goal, but a common context like a group of people in a company and a complex project with linked tasks. In each of these cases, there is a relevant product. These products were designed with these use cases in mind. So your needs have already been looked at and solution has been delivered. Our idea as a person or entity who is trying to utilize them is to discover the needs behind each product and each set of features. Having said that, all this requires people to change their ways of working because we have been working in a certain way for decades. Whether it is efficient or not, nobody checks. So most probably it is inefficient. But still, changing something is difficult because you have to answer the question, what is in it for me? And how do you answer that question? There are multiple methods of change management. One of the more popular ones nowadays is called ADCAR method. It's not a complex word, it's just an acronym based on. Awareness, unless people know, they will not use it, obviously. They should not only know it, based on the benefits they can envisage, they should have a desire to use. Once you have the desire, only then you are going to learn it. And then just learning is not enough. You have to have the confidence and conviction to use it when the need arises. So mapping it to business context. And then people come and go, new person join, should not again remain inefficient. So sustainability and reinforcement, this is the model of change management. Now, when it comes to using these products effectively, it's not a one person who a job. It's not only LND, it's definitely not IT's job. It is something which is of a process which works across different entities. And the most important part of that process is the leadership or the top management because if everyone becomes efficient, the company is going to grow faster and it is the management's job to make the company grow faster. So they are direct beneficiaries of this. So first step 
in this is people at top should know what is the potential impact and how they can drive. And then, of course, everyone needs to know it by creating some large sessions. Typically, we do it in auditorium or cafeteria, the largest venue available for a customer. And then we standardize the processes by creating standard operating procedures. We can also dive deeper and look at individual activities and improve them like I showed you the example earlier. And in order to get long term benefit, we create a champion team inside who do this internalizing or institutionalizing of this process. So why CXOs are important? Because unless boss says nobody is going to change anything, at least initially. If you will expect people to learn everything proactively and learn it, implement it on their own, that's not going to happen because nobody thinks office is a core product for them. So that has to be driven from top and top management is interested in it because they want ROI, they want to drive growth and they want to leverage whatever value they can extract from the money they are spending. So it's a, it's a natural fit. So unless you have a top management person as an active member of this, it's just not going to work. You may have spent money, you're not going to get any return on investment. In fact, you're going to get return on ignorance, not return on investment. So if you understand this, we can help you in getting your CXO buying. That sponsorship doesn't just mean you money, they have to actively support it. Now, Champions are also important. Champions means people who actually do the process of understanding the platform and utilizing. They should be nominated by CXOs because they have to spend extra time doing this. So unless boss agrees, they are not going to be able to do it. So they learn and map. Two step process, detect inefficiency. These are four simple ways of detecting inefficiency. And once you detect inefficiency, you have to find the efficient way. How do you do that? For that also, there is a generic thought process. If you have noticed inefficiency, assume Microsoft must have noticed it much before and must have given me a solution. If it's a localized problem, typically the solution is right click. If it's a more generalized problem, the option is in the menu on the top or the ribbon. And one simple thing when you undo, that means you don't know how to do. So look for these irritating icons. They usually have the correct solution. Bottom line, most of us know that there is a need and we are supposed to build a solution. In case of Office, it's reverse. There are 20,000 features which are already solutions. You have to discover your needs and the benefits behind them. So it's reverse discovery rather than solution building. And because we have not been taught this concept, people are not ending up using the Office platform correctly. They are still trying to build a solution. No, there's already a solution discover your needs and standard. So the process is explore. Obviously we'll learn, you will apply it to the correct context, share it, but sharing is optional. People may listen to you, people may not listen to you. So standard, that's how this process works. And when you are doing this explore, learn, apply, you have to create a matrix like this. So when you are learning a feature, you say, okay, I learned a feature in PowerPoint. What is the feature design idea? What does it make? nice looking automatic slide who will benefit everyone. Like that you create a matrix. Obviously it's uh, going to be a long list. Then sort it on beneficiary and then who is the biggest beneficiary go and teach them. That's how it's an ongoing sustained process. So how do you create standardized SOPs? SOPs typically are boring documents. We don't want that, but uh, what we do is create best practices in a nice manner visually appealing PPT video, we can even gamify. But the most important thing is it is not sent to people by HR, l &D, process excellence. It is sent by CXOs. And that is where CXOs will help you gain maximum benefit out of the platform. And when boss sends a mail, whether you understand it or not, whether you like it or not, at least initially people will do it. And then they will realize, oh, there is so much in it for me, so I will do it and it's spread. So these are the common mistakes people you do while using Office 365. Obviously, they don't talk to CXOs. CXOs don't understand. 
then we do another mistake phase release phase one is one drive phase two is teams that is the stupidest way of doing this because all these products are designed to work together phasing is important so you do manageable chunks but phasing should be done by a number of people so initial phase is small you take 10 people release everything to them let them become efficient learn from that then take the next phase 50 people like that you phase then again many people just do some launch related training a subset of products are taught to a subset of people obviously no roi everything is underused and misused everyone doesn't install all the tools on mobile again a problem and office 365 the first word is office but when we train people we don't include office in it and that defeats the purpose so these are the common mistakes now obviously i have not mentioned this in all these 14 sessions in the past but you must be realizing that what i am showing you and the kind of thoughts i am sharing with you i am sure you have seen enough sessions and enough videos but the approach is different and that is what i have learned over three decades and a version of all this is available to all of you as services offered by me and my organization so obviously the toughest thing there is cxo engagement unless top management understand nothing else is going to happen so i specialize in creating those sessions and delivering it in person and nowadays live as well to top management these can be short sessions and then everything falls into place so these are different type of engagement models we offer i work very extensively with microsoft itself one of my biggest customers is microsoft where microsoft takes me to their customers so that they understand the value of the platform and utilize it fully let's close today's session and the series so i must thank shesha manindo and zs for all the work they have done for all the 15 sessions and Anindo has been a friend of mine for decades and we have never worked so closely together. And I must say, Anindo, it's because of you that the entire way in which I present has dramatically improved. Thank you for that. So Anindo is an expert in IT as well as a very, very renowned photographer and a multi-talented polymath. So he has helped me not only create better looking presentations, but a better way of storytelling in a more refined and world class manner. With that, let's come to the end of this session. Thank you for joining. It was a pleasure.